So we're going to start talking about how to apply calculus to um, functions defined by vectors. And uh, vectors have become very useful when you're trying to model movement in three dimensions and higher. So we, we want to get the basics down. So just to start, remember that a vector is anything that represents an object that has magnitude and direction. So those two concepts are implicit in the definition of a vector. So I'm just going to give you a quick review um, of vectors because hopefully you're at this video having studied them at least briefly and you know the basics, but let me just review the basics. In two dimensions, we're going to view as a vector as an ordered pair of numbers. So for instance, let's say I have a vector u, which I indicate with an arrow over the head, or a bold face if it's in a book, and it'll be usually written in brackets, but you'll see in other textbooks the context can sometimes imply, imply that it's a vector and they'll even be written as what look like points. This too is called the x component of the vector. This 3 is called the y component. And uh, the this this vector doesn't actually have a location. All it does all it has is a length and a direction. So um, I can conveniently place it here, where its tail is at the origin and its head is at the point two three. And this would be vector u, and this would be vector u in standard position. Standard position just means the tail is at the origin. We like standard position because the arrowhead is at the point which represents the, co the, the coordinates or the components of this vector in component form. But you can graph vectors anywhere, so this is also vector u, even though I've positioned it in a different location because vectors don't have a location. So that's also vector, vector u. Now let's talk about magnitude. The magnitude which is written or notated with absolute value bars is indicated just indicates the length of the vector so in our case our vector 2 comma 3 if we wanted its length so remember its length now is actually a, a, a real number it's not a it doesn't have components to find that we can just do the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle here and we can see that it's going to be 2 squared plus the relationship is 2 squared plus 3 squared equals the magnitude of u squared, which implies that this, this magnitude is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared which is the square root of 13. So there is its length. Now let's go talk about direction. So vectors can be described in terms of their magnitude and direction. The direction angle is just the angle in standard position. In other words, the angle that the vector makes with the positive x-axis when it's positioned in standard position. So um, let's just say for our particular example, there's my vector u. Let's say it has this direction angle. To find it, we would just again use the fact that this creates a right triangle. And that trigonometry says that the tangent of this angle is 3 over 2. And therefore, the angle must be the inverse tangent of 3 over 2. Now just be careful if the vector is not positioned such that its head um, is in quadrant 1, then when you do tan inverse, you're going to have to look at the triangle and understand that the tan inverse function could give you an angle that doesn't make sense in your picture because it's only defined on the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, or negative 90 to 90. So just make sure you look at the diagram when you're finding these angles to make sure that your actual answer is the angle in standard position. And lastly, let's just look at a way to relate 
component form, um, uh, or the, the a vector's magnitude and ang direction angle with its component form. So let's say that's my vector. Let's say that's vector u. Now let's if it has components, um, you know, x comma y. Well, that implies that this is x and this is y. If it has direction angle theta and its magnitude is indicated by the magnitude of u, then we can go back and forth between the component form and um, the form that represents the magnitude and the angle. And again, that's just simple trigonometry. So notice that the cosine of theta in this diagram is x over the magnitude of u, which implies that x is equal to the magnitude of u times the cosine of theta. And likewise, the y-coordinate would be the magnitude of u times the sine of theta. And then that just tells me that component form can always be obtained if all I'm given are the magnitudes and directions and direction angles of vectors. Okay, so there's a quick, that's just a very quick overview of the concepts you'll need to know um, when doing calculus on vectors. There's a few more in the next slide. Okay, so um, let's just do a few applications. First, notice there's other ways of representing vectors. You can give, be given two points, and an arrowhead over the two points tells you where the vector starts and where it ends. So PQ would be the vector that starts at point P and ends at point Q. And if you want to find the component form, what you'll need to do is um, either apply a subtraction algorithm, which you know works, but if not, just make a quick picture and find out find it that way. So the point P is 2, 3, and Q is negative 1, 5. So vector PQ starts at P and ends at Q. And notice that's a vector that moves you to the left 3 and up 2. And so therefore, PQ can be expressed as the vector that make, moves you left 3 and up 2. Now you can always get that. I mean, if your points are way, really far apart and you just don't feel like graphing it, you can always get that by subtracting the, the tail from the head of the vector. And so what I, what I mean is you can just take the point Q, which is where the head of this vector is, and subtract point P. And you end up getting negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. So that'll work as well. If you're given the magnitude and direction angle of a vector, we saw in the last, uh, the last slide that... Trigonometry connects the component form with the magnitude and direction angle. So the x-coordinate we know is just the magnitude of u times the cosine of the angle, which in this case would be 5 cosine of 140, which happens to be negative 3.83. And the y-component would be the magnitude of u times the sine of theta, which is... 3.21, and so the vector and component form would be that. Just check for consistency. This vector clearly has a length of 5 and is pointing in, in a direction that's in, the, in quadrant 2, right? And is that consistent with the component form? Yes, because this vector moves you left and up. So that, uh, that answer makes sense. Now if you want to go in the other direction and you had to find the magnitude and direction of, uh, direction angle of the vector given in component form, I would recommend maybe a picture. So negative 2, 7. Is, uh, this sloppily drawn vector, and um, those represent the legs of that right triangle. What we want is this angle, that's the direction angle, and we want the magnitude. 
So let's just call this vector u. The magnitude of vector u is easy because it's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So it's the square root of negative 2 squared plus 7 squared, which is the square root of 53. And so there's the magnitude and the direction angle. What you will do is do two, tan inverse of, now I think I'm just going to do 7 halves. You don't need to include the negative, but you can. When you do that on your calculator, you get 105, um, no, I'm sorry, you get, let's just do that out. Make sure you're in degree mode. You get 74.05. Five, but that's not the direction angle. That's the supplement of the direction angle. That just gave us this, so we know that that angle there is seventy-four point zero five five, which means that the actual direction angle is one hundred eighty minus that. All right, and so if you do one hundred eighty minus that, you get one hundred and five. 0.945. So just be careful there. And that makes sense, right? This vector moves you left and up. And a direction angle of 105 degrees would be uh, consistent with a vector that does that. Now before we move on to calculus of vectors, let's just look at the, the basics of the geometry. If I've got two vectors and I want to add them geometrically, that amounts to um, graphing one of them, so let's graph u, it has co uh, components 1, 1, so it moves you right 1 and up 1, so that's u, and then adding v to it means to start v at the head of this vector and move left 3 and up 2, so, so that's v, this was u, and the results here in orange is geometrically representing the sum u plus v. And you can see that the arithmetic of vectors also is consistent with the geometry. Because this orange vector, you can see the result of it moves you left 2 and up 3, just like the arithmetic gives. Um, so 2 times the vector u would mean to take the vector u and double its length. The arithmetic allows us to just treat that 2 as a, a scalar that can be distributed to each of the components. And by doing that, you've taken vector u and you've just doubled its length. To this to be to be this new orange vector. Um, and negative two u would be the vector going in the complete opposite direction as two u but that has the exact same length. So we can imagine vector 2u um, going in the complete opposite direction. It's, this stylus is not the easiest to use. So there's just some basics of geometry um, and again just in general, if you wanted to graph the summation rule, if you have any vector u and you're adding it to vector v, then this blue, as long as they're situated in that special way, that blue vector represents their sum.